This is worksheet seven of the gas laws packet, and this is going to be another graphing activity. This time we are going to graph Charles' law. You've already learned the concept behind Charles' law, which says that at constant pressure, temperature, and volume are directly related. So as one goes up, so does the other, and vice versa. You've practiced the different variations of Charles' law equations, and so now to really understand the relationship between temperature and volume, we are going to graph a set of data. <clears throat> so if you look at the instructions, it tells you that you're going to graph the first two columns of the table below. Temperature in degrees Celsius, which is going to be the independent x variable, so that'll go along our, our horizontal axis, and volume in liters, which will go along our vertical y axis. Um, it says to ignore this last column of the table for now. The last column, what it's going to want you to do after you've made your graph is to convert all of the temperatures that are in Celsius over here to Kelvin. So remember, what we do is just take our uh, Celsius temperature, <clears throat> so for the first one it's 100, and add 273. So in Kelvin this would be... 373. But I would wait to do that um, until after you've made the graph because you don't want to accidentally graph those values. All right, the other direction that you need to see here is it's telling you when you set up your graph paper that's on the next page of the packet, uh, you need to rotate the sheet of paper horizontally. So you actually have to turn your paper sideways. Um, and you, you do that because you need to be able to fit a temperature scale along the horizontal x-axis that goes from negative 300 um, up to 100. And if you look at the values of temperature, it looks like we only need to go um, down to 200, negative 200. But there's going to be a follow-up question that's going to ask you to extend your line. So you need to set up your graph paper so that eventually you can graph all the way down to negative 300. So I think what we should do is have you actually flip over um, <clears throat> to your graph in just a minute here, and we'll set it up together. But before we do that, I want to look at the numbers we're going to be graphing. Um, your temperature values are nice, even, whole numbers, so they should be pretty easy to graph, <clears throat> right? 175 so on and so forth, all the way down to negative 200. Um, if you look at the values for volume, they have some decimals, uh, which are a little bit harder to graph. So what I want you to think about is this. Um, you know, 10 is easy enough to graph, right? We could take care of that one. But 9.33, how are you going to find 0.33 on a graph? That's a little bit tedious, right? But if you think about it, the fraction one-third is the same as the decimal point three three repeating. So we could say nine point three three is really basically the same as nine and one third. So I want you to write that down. Okay. Uh, if we look at the next number, eight point six six. Well, the fraction two thirds is really equal to point six six repeating. So we could say eight point six six is really the same as eight and two-thirds. All right, so 7.66 would be 7 and two-thirds. Uh, 7.32 we could even say is close enough to 7.33 that we could call this 7 and one-third. 6.65 is pretty close to 6 and two-thirds. 5.98 is close to 5, or excuse me, duh, is close to 6, so on and so forth. And so you're going to want to kind of round to the closest third. And that might not seem right now like it's going to make it easier to graph, um, but we're going to set up your graph paper so that it actually is easy to graph uh, one-thirds and two-thirds. Okay, so let's flip over to your graph paper. <clears throat> okay, so you can flip over to your graph paper. I have a little piece of graph paper here. And I'm going to try to write small so that I can fit both labels on my axes and also numbers. Uh, so you want to make sure and leave space for your numbers. 
I'll actually put those on first. Our horizontal axis, uh, remember, needs to start at negative 300. And I would recommend that you make each hatch mark worth 10. So we'd have negative 290, negative 280, negative 270, negative 260. This here would be negative 250. You can label each line if you want. It just gets a little crowded if you do that. Negative 240, 230, 220, 210. Here's negative 200. Negative 190, 180, 170, 160. Here's negative 150, 140, 130, 120, 110. Here's negative 100, 90, 80, 70, 60. Negative 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Here's zero, so this is actually sort of your... Uh, axis if you will so you don't have to but you can kind of highlight that so you can orient yourself <clears throat> I didn't do a very good job of that hopefully you do a better job than me okay now we're going up 10 20 30 40 50 you should be labeling these also and 60 70 80 90 100 if you've done it right you should get right to 100 on your paper Okay, and we need to make sure, I don't have a lot of room, you should have more on your paper, to label this as temperature in degrees Celsius. Okay? Now we're going to rotate so that we can put a scale for our volume. Now, volume we only need to get up to 10. So what we're going to do, because we've got to be able to graph one-third and two-thirds, right, we're starting at zero. Um, but then each little hatch mark is going to be worth a third. So this first hatch mark would be worth one third, two thirds, and then this here would be one. And then this would be one and one third, one and two thirds, and this here. Sorry, I have to rotate so I can write. Would be two. Two and one third, two and two thirds, three. Three and one third, three and two thirds. Four, four and one third, four and two thirds, five, one, two, three. So basically, every third is our next whole number. One, two, three is, oops, seven. One, two, three would be eight. One, two, three would be nine. And one, two, three, right up here is ten. Okay, now, I don't have a lot of room on my paper. You have more. Rotate again. Um, but you want to make sure and label this as volume in liters. And you also need to put a title on your graph. So a lot like the last graph we did. Um, your title could be Charles Law. Or your title could be Temperature versus Volume. Um, I'm not going to write one on because there's just not space on my little graph here, um, but you want to put one on. So go ahead and do that right now. Title up at the top, either Charles Law or Temperature versus Volume. Okay, and then you're going to have a graph all set up so that when you get into class tomorrow, you can actually graph the points and connect them with a ruler and then work on the follow-up questions. So we will do that the next time we meet in class.